Hi guys, this is going to be a video about my competitive programming journey. What does that mean? Well, it's a video about how I got to where I am now. For example, the websites and platforms I used, as well as the sort of different resources I had for practicing and learning things, as well as how you can use those resources for yourselves. <clears throat> and additionally, it's going to be about just in general, like contest mentality and the sort of like ways you should be approaching things, because stuff like that is also incredibly important, as I have found out myself. As a disclaimer, this is of course not the only way to like get good. This is just what I did, and it's a possible, let's say, a roadmap that you can use and follow if you want for yourself. So, who am I, and why do I have the right to make this video? Well. I have many things that would be impressive to some people. For example, on Code Forces, I am currently and have just reached International Grandmaster. On Code Chef, I am seven star, albeit barely, but still seven star for many contests now. We can go over some recent contests too. On Code Jam, the most recent one, I was a semi finalist and ended up with a pretty bad rank in the third round, but it could have been better had I. I mean, it was four months ago, so it would be better now, I would say. And at the same time, just a day ago, on the recent Kickstart round, I have placed 24th. And again, would have been better if I wasn't recording. But anyway, irrelevant. Those are some of my achievements, and... <clears throat> well, that's what I'm going to be talking about. So I was first introduced to competitive programming essentially by word of mouth of my friends. I was at some birthday party actually, and I heard my friends talking about it, some contest about programming, and I figured if my friends are doing it, why not, right? Just give it a shot. So this contest was called USICO, which is for the USA Computing Olympiad, and essentially it's the qualification scheme for uh, IOI, the International Olympiad in Informatics, which is a huge competition that's like world class. And USICO is basically the entry level how they select students to send from the US. There are four divisions, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum in order of increasing difficulty. And everyone starts in bronze and progresses through the divisions as they do well in contests. So. I started off by just trying out bronze and then seeing how I would do. The only program I pro programming experience I had was from school, basically just some like basic uh, intro level classes. But it turns out that this bronze contest that I ended up doing was, I think, the easiest one of the year and possibly the easiest one for a long time because I, in basically just an hour, ended up with a perfect score on all three problems. And Yusuko has always three problems, where each problem is worth the same points. And there are multiple test cases. If you pass all of them, you immediately get full points for the problem. And if you don't pass all of them, you get a score proportional to the number of test cases you get. The Yusuko rules aren't exactly relevant, but in case you're interested, that's how it works. And I would say it's still a good contest to do, even if you're not in the US and not trying for IOI, there is still some value you can get out of doing these problems in these contests. So bronze went amazing. I got a perfect score. And in USICO, when you get a perfect score on one division, it lets you immediately take the contest of the next division, which is called in-contest promotion. So I promoted to silver. And I tried that too, because again, why not? And uh, well, silver did not go so well. I ended up with, in four hours, I ended up with one test case out of 30. And it was the sample. That, the sample is the one they give you to make sure you understand the problem. Like, it's a free test case. And that was the only thing I got, which is kind of sad. And, you know, I would get that a lot of people would be discouraged by this, that there's a contest that they tried and they just absolutely horrendously failed and got nowhere, because I was basically getting nowhere. And, I mean, it's just not, it's just kind of not a good mentality to have, to 
be hung on failure too much. So what I did was instead of being sad and like not being motivated to continue or start competitive programming, I instead decided to take this failure personally. And I made it my mission over the next three months to beat this silver division, which proved to be quite hard. So Yusuko has four contests. I did the first, and the other three are a month apart each. And they're all like the same format, just different problems, obviously. So I started to practice for the next Yusuko contest. And one thing I used, the most important thing, was a site called Yusuko Training which has definitely a bad reputation for being old and kind of outdated, but I still think it's very valuable because <clears throat> basically just because of its format. It has good lectures on necessary concepts that you need to know, and it has problems relevant to those concepts to help you practice them, as well as different sorts of problems that just help your general thinking ability. And it also forces you to solve without editorials, which means that if you don't know how to solve a problem, you can't like move on. You have to keep trying until you get it. And that also helps you like improve your thinking process and just become a better problem solver in general. I think it's a great format and that more people should start with it. But anyway, that was what I used. Yusuko training and a combination of practicing other bronze and silver problems, mostly silver. So a month went by and contest two rolled around. And well, again, it wasn't that easy. I actually ended up solving two problems, and I was very, very close to gold. I was two test cases off out of around 30, which was, to say the least, disheartening. But you know, once again, you can't let failure hurt you too much because, I mean, look at the progress. I had gone from solving zero problems and getting a single test case to almost making gold already. So that was good. And instead of quitting, I continued. And silver became even more personal now to get through. So for another month, I just went through the same training procedure, continued Yusuko training, did more silver problems. And contest three, it didn't go well either. I actually ended up only solving one problem. And the other two, well, one of them was because of a stupid mistake. There are going to be a lot of stupid mistakes that happen. And you kind of just have to, like, you can't dwell on them. They're going to happen, for sure. And instead of dwelling on them, the best thing to do is to make it so you don't mess up like that again. And that was what I tried to do. So, three, I failed once again. Ended up with just over half the necessary credit to promote, but it was not nearly enough. And then, another month went by, I practiced even harder, tried very hard to get past silver. And in the final contest, which is the notorious US Open, where the problems are harder and you have five hours because the problems are intentionally harder, well, I ended up passing silver. Actually, I ended up acing silver only because I managed to cheese a stupid solution through a geometry problem that I wasn't actually able to solve. <clears throat> but I ended up in contest promoting to gold. And in gold, well, this totally came as a surprise to me. But I ended up basing gold, too. Somehow. I still don't know how. One of, one of the reasons was because I ended up cheesing a graph problem with an unintended, like, O of 1 math solution that wasn't supposed to pass, but did, because they ended up designing the problem badly. And it was a very easy thing to fix. If they had just changed the numbers around, my solution wouldn't have worked, but the original solution still would have. So it was kind of luck in that regard. But nonetheless, I actually ended up in contest promoting to Platinum. And then in Platinum, I got totally destroyed. Not really interesting. I just got, like, nothing. It was very, very hard. Platinum is the worst. Yeah. So that was in detail, basically, my first year of experience with Yusuko. Um, after that, well, it kind of just became more chill. I definitely got burned out from doing, like, too much practice in those three months because I was basically, like, putting as much, as, my free, as much of my free time as I could into just doing that. I don't know why I was so determined, but I was. I think part of the motivation was having friends that I wanted to beat. And I recommend doing that too, just having other people you can compete against, because that's always fun and competitive, and just helps you be more motivated to practice and stuff. If you see them getting better, you should get better yourself to match them.
<clears throat> but anyway, yeah, that was those three months were a lot. I ended up like becoming burned out mostly, and even though reaching platinum was inspiring, and the next year the goal was to get beyond platinum into the training camp, uh, that wasn't gonna happen for a while. So for the next two months, I kind of just chilled, finished off the USCO training, um, did a couple of Code Chef contests, but that wasn't really interesting to me at that time, so that's not much. And then I found out about Code Forces, and well, I did a few basic easy problems, like not really much, just a generally chill period. And then later, I ended up deciding that I wanted to do contests on Code Forces. <clears throat> And these contests were fun. First contest, I ended up solving three problems. Um, it was inspiring. I was almost expert in my first contest, which I was happy about because it meant that my platinum experience was more valuable than I thought it was, even on other sites. So that was fun. And my practice at that time, I was done with USCO training. I wasn't on Code Chef anymore. It was just kind of Code Forces. And what I was doing instead of trying to get into new problems is... I was just kind of making the most I could out of the contest I was doing. That is, I was upsolving problems that I couldn't in contest, and at the same time I was taking time to learn new concepts that I didn't understand before so that when they came up in contest later, I would be able to use them, which is also closely related to upsolving because many times there were concepts I didn't know in the problems I couldn't solve. So that was a another period of 3 months where I just did a bunch of contests, and man, there were so many stupid mistakes in that period. On this period of my graph for like three months, I was kind of just like, or two months, I guess, I was kind of hard stuck in expert around 1800, because almost every contest, there would be some stupid mistake that totally destroyed my performance. And the worst one I remember was when I did extremely well in a Div 2, and I was set to be 17th place before system tests. And then after t after system tests, if you can get what guess what happened, well, I failed problem B, and it dropped me down to 55th, which is, of course, still an amazing rank, but what would have gotten me to candidate master almost immediately ended up instead getting me to high expert, and then I spent a lot of time not being in candidate master. But at the very least, it made the point where I did finally end up breaking into candidate master so much more satisfying. So, you know, even if you fail, it'll just make the inevitable victory you have better on in the future. There are a lot of reasons to not dwell on failure. This is one of them. So after reaching Candidate Master, I decided that I wanted to get back into Yusuko. Because, well, the next stage of Yusuko after Platinum was a thing called Training Camp, which is essentially they, the Yusuko administrators take the top competitors from Platinum and they ship them off to a place where they essentially compete for the chance to be in the IOI team. And I definitely wasn't expecting to make IOI or anything like that. But it was, and in fact, the structure of the camp wouldn't even let me do it in that year. But camp was the next stage, so I wanted to get there. That was my next goal. So I spent the three months before the December contest um, grinding a lot of USCO style problems. That is... Problems with data structures, um, generally graphs and trees specifically, and also dynamic programming. I was doing this on code forces sometimes with difficulty levels of like 2100 to 2400. It's a reasonable estimate for platinum. Typically harder actually, but I wasn't ready for those yet. Um, at the same time, I was also, of course, pl practicing platinum problems. And um, in Usico, when there wasn't a platinum division, the gold division was the equivalent, so I was also doing problems from the old gold division, as well as platinum, because of course it's best to practice the things that you're actually trying to get good at. So yeah, basically platinum problems and some data structure heavy problems from co-forces. Kind of just like alternating between those two. Um, that was contest, that was for contest one, and when contest one actually rolled around, well, I did very well on that one. I got 19th, I think, and ended up on the leaderboard of what they call top competitors, which is just people who got above a certain good score. So I solved a problem and kind of a problem and a half because there are subtasks, which was good enough. 
And then after that, I basically ramped the difficulty up to just basically only 2400s in the same category as Code Forces. And I continued to try and finish off the rest of the old goal problems as much as I could do. And, well, I was preparing for the second contest. And so when that rolled around, well, I should have been even more prepared than the first contest, but um, it didn't go so well. I actually ended up solving nothing. I got maybe like three test cases of one problem, which wasn't even a single subtask. It was a very weird verdict. Which was, I mean, disappointing. It was quite disappointing, actually. The way USCO is set up is that it lets you... Often you can fail a single contest and you'll still be considered because um, they're just lenient like that, as long as you do well in the other ones. So that was kind of my... Um, that was kind of my mulligan, my do-over. So I could fail that one, and then failing that meant that I had to do better in the other ones. So that was my goal. I had to crush contest three. So I practiced even harder, just basically doing as much as I can to do as well as I can in problem three, or contest three. Basically the same regimen, again, the 2400 problems. By that point, I had done most of, or as much of platinum and old gold as I could. So I just stuck with the code forces. And contest three rolled around, and it didn't go so well. And... Uh, once again, I didn't even solve like half of a problem, which was sad. A lot of it was because I was feeling too pressured, probably, and that if I just calmed down a bit, I could have gone with a better strategy and probably just done better in general. But yeah, that's kind of important to just try and not take contests too seriously, because if you will, it because if you do, it clouds your judgment. It kind of screws with you. If you find a good balance between not caring about the result and at the same time caring enough to not like give up midway, then that's perfect. You want to keep trying and not freak out about it. That's all you got to do in contest. Just push through and do what you can. But I didn't, and I failed the third contest too. That was kind of it in terms of camp. I After that, I just accepted that it wouldn't happen because I had done too badly in those two. Although shifting away from USCO for a second, during that same period, before even the first USCO contest, I actually ended up making Master on Code Forces, which is a pretty distinctive rank. Uh, I think it used to mean more in the past than it does now because there are more people, but I mean, Master is still pretty good, even now. So that was where I first started feeling the success. I felt the urge to do, to win. I don't know, win something, because that was a good success on code forces to have. And um, so meanwhile, at the same time while I was doing USCO, I was also doing co contests on code forces, <laughs> um, bouncing between master and candidate master. Eventually I ended up getting 12th in the contest, which was insane because it brought me up to like 2250, almost the international master, just from a single div two. Which sort of shows the effects of inflation, but I mean, whatever. I was happy with it. Plus 150. You kidding me? I'll take that. So, that was a good thing. And then after that, well, as you'd see in my rating graph, there was this massive drop where I, um, in one global round, I solved three problems and ended up losing 166 rating in a single contest. And that was devastating, honestly, because I was, you know, so close to International Master, which was my next goal by then, having given up on Yusuko, and then I just totally got demolished by that. And uh, that contest, it hit me harder than I'd like to admit, so I'm just going to not admit it, and instead I'm going to say that it inspired me to do more contests on different websites. Because after that, I decided to get back into Code Chef. And I did one Div 2 on Code Chef and ended up winning it, which was crazy. But from that, that kind of helped. From that, I decided, doing, decided to do contests both simultaneously on Code Forces and Code Chef. Obviously not at the same time, but like just doing both of them. Um, around then, <clears throat> the fourth USCO contest happened. I did kind of well. I solved another problem and a half, but... Not enough to be significant enough. 
So yeah, as I predicted, eventually camp was a failure, which was sad. But now I had a newfound goal to succeed on the other sites, namely Coforces and Kochev. And specifically, it was Kochev, actually, because that one was novel and interesting to me. So during that time, I practiced a lot on Kochev. And the way to do that is, because they don't have difficulty levels, or they don't have difficulty numbers that correspond to rating, they instead have difficulties like easy, easy, medium, 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 hard, hard, and, uh, you know, simple, cakewalk, whatever they are. And super hard, I think. And maybe impossible, but <clears throat> I don't remember what they're called. But anyway, they have difficulties like those. And so I think the best way to find some sort of practice regimen for Coach F is to first find the level of difficulty that like is hard for you. And you can do that because the problems in each difficulty group, say medium, are ordered by solves. So you can pick some problem and then give it maybe I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour or so. However long you'd normally spend to try a problem. If you can't get it, maybe move to some easier ones and just find the difficulty that works for you. Kind of like a binary search, if you know what that is. <clears throat> like you pick one problem, if it's too easy, you move on to harder ones. If it's too hard, you move on to easier ones. And if it's just right, then it's just right. Perfect. But that was what I did. I just found some difficulty and started like grinding out a bunch of them at once. Uh, for me, it was medium. And I just did a bunch of them. And those helped with sort of conceptual things and strengthening my ability to think around data structures, as many of the code chef problems used to be like that, more data structure oriented and less sort of ad hoc or thinking oriented. Then beyond that, um, around the point where I hit, or I finally got international master on code forces, like I realized that the code chef kind of just wasn't helping me anymore. And at a certain point, it stops being about your ability to use concepts and things like that. It's more about just your thinking ability. Because the harder problems, like, for example, Div1D and maybe sometimes Div1C, they are quite hard. They often require not only advanced techniques, but also a lot of thinking around it to be able to reduce the problem to what you need it to be, to something solvable. And so the best type of practice, therefore, is practicing your thinking ability and use general problem solving, not certain topics. <clears throat> so what I was trying to do is, because Code Forces was taking a recent ad hoc trend where a lot of the problems were about thinking, <clears throat> I made the most out of the contests that were happening. So I tried up solving more and did as many contests as I can. Even some of the Div 3s and Div 2s because they you know, still stimulated the brain. They kind of helped out in some ways. It was useful. And in terms of practice, I at that point, I would recommend sites like ActCoder, which is very heavy on the thinking-oriented problems and ad hoc, or also IOI-style problems, because those are generally good <coughs> for um, thinking, because they have a lot of subtasks. They actually help you through the thinking process with subtasks about the problem, and it's just generally kind of a good experience to try those out. Because they're usually good. They're usually about thinking, and they're usually going to be helpful. And of course, you can also try the types of problems on code forces that you're trying to solve. However, the problem with code forces is that there are a ton of old problems from many years ago, and many of them don't have much of the thinking. They have a lot of like advanced data structures, applications of those, stuff like that. It's less useful than it would seem. So you would either want to do recent code forces or some of the other sites I mentioned, at coder or IOI style problems. So a few more contests happened, and actually two more. And finally, finally, it finally happened. After it was over one and a half years by that point since I started competitive programming, which is relatively short for some, but I mean still, it's a good amount of time to invest in something. <clears throat> I finally hit red. Grandmaster. The the famous color of like all sites. I don't know. <clears throat> Specifically at 20 24 24 rating, which is a nice number. <clears throat> and I think honestly the most significant change I did, which and after hitting red, I ended up not losing rating many times in many different contests in a row. I think the most significant change I did was, honestly, like fixing my sleep schedule. So that 
even with the early contests, I wasn't waking up early and kind of throwing myself off before the contest even started because sleep is honestly so important. It's incredible how much of a difference it can make. If you feel awake, if you feel energized, you're going to be really good in the contest, much better than you would if you're tired and you can barely focus on a single thought, obviously. So honestly, it's the best advice I can give. Fix your sleep schedules, honestly, if you haven't already. And if you have, good job. You are, you are set to be better. <clears throat> so around the same time after hitting red, and st I started YouTube, as you are watching right now. It was just general chill screencasts. I'm kind of still doing those at the same time. And I think that helped too, because that kept me focused on what I was trying to do. It kept me focused in the unofficial rounds, like the Div 2s that I did. And at the same time, it helped me to make the most out of what I was doing to be able to practice more and improve more. So I wouldn't say that everyone should start YouTube. It's kind of a lot. It's kind of work to do, but just something like that. It's something to consider. I think it does help, to be honest. And most of the training I was doing at this point was training my ad hoc powers, my ability to think, doing as many contests as I could because most of the contests ended up being helpful. On Code Forces, Code Chef, At Coder, um, also some Google stuff like Kickstart and Code Jam. Code Jam was before. And speaking of Code Chef, I ended up hitting seven stars. Actually, before I got red. But it was fun. It was cool. It was very unexpected. I got two rank 11 performances in a row, just totally out of nowhere, and just took it from there and ended up being red. <clears throat> but, yeah, at a certain point, it stops being more important about what you practice and kind of just that whatever you do is helping you think. It's not just brainlessly applying some random data structures because thinking is what's necessary at this at high stages. Thinking and a general mastery of the basic concepts. If you have both of those, you'll be pretty pretty well off in terms of contests. And after that, I continued doing the YouTube game. There was a lot less practice that happened because the contests were, well, there were many of them, like multiple a week, and that was enough for me. And it ended up working. I didn't, haven't lost rating in red yet, and I hit International Grandmaster, and that's where we are now. So that is essentially my competitive programming journey, what I've been doing. And, well, these are not the type of videos I usually make. I tend to stay more like the chill side, like screencasts and, you know, stuff like solution videos for recent contests and stuff. And sometimes I've done a few tutorials. I might continue those. But if you like these types of videos, the types of things that tell you more about me and how, like, practice tips and stuff, I guess that's more of the important thing. Nobody, yeah. Um, if you like these, I mean, I guess I'll have to do more. So... Leave feedback on what you thought about this. And yeah, that's all I got. Goodbye.